You know what it is, Diamond K in the morning on the all new radio on fire.com. Thank you for joining me. Glad to be here. Uh, dropping new episodes Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. This morning, we're going to talk about Donald Trump's impeachment, day three. Tessica Brown, the girl that put gorilla glue in her hair, has undergone surgery. And uh, she actually regrets posting the whole thing. Also, at least six people have been killed in a massive crash on an icy Texas interstate. And we're going to be joined by rapper Tamara Bubble. It's Diamond K in the morning on the all new radio on fire.com. I'll be back after this. Welcome back to the program. Diamond K in the morning on the all new radio on fire.com. Get breaking news, adult conversation, covering topics that are important to black America. Visit the all new radio on fire.com for original radio, podcasts, and TV programs. So, at least six people have been killed in this 130 vehicle pileup on a Texas interstate. It was a massive crash. Um, and, um, yesterday morning amid the winter storm, dropping, freezing rain, sleet and snow all over the country, a scene of the crash on interstate 35 near downtown Fort Worth was a tangle of, uh, tractor trailers, semi trailers, cars, trucks smashed into each other and turned every which way. Some vehicles actually on top of one another. It was a terrible scene. Uh, Just a terrible scene. The vehicles were just mangled. A spokesperson for MedStar said uh, they provide ambulance services for the area. Multiple tow trucks on the scene. Uh, It just took a lot to disentangle this horrible wreck. Uh, So, of course, you, you can see multiple people taken to the hospital. At least... 65 people treated at the hospital, 36 of them taken by ambulance. Um, and uh, uh, the, the crash site, critical injuries, uh, it is it, it is just a disaster. Of course, we are praying for everyone. Uh, the roadways were very treacherous, uh, and ice is something that first responders encountered trying to help some of these people and uh, the mixture of sand and salt they tried to use on the scene to try to make it easier to pass at one point one of the ambulances were hit uh, and um, it sustained only minor damage Um, the crew members were fine Uh, further south in Austin More than two dozen vehicles were involved in a pileup on an icy highway there. Five people were taken to the hospital. Uh, And, you know, there's there's a uh, what they call the polar vortex swirling air that normally sits over the Earth's poles has moved near the U.S. Canadian border, resulting in colder weather further south than usual. So that's why we're getting some of this stuff. Uh, As a result, we're getting this unseasonably cold air that's spilling across the south. So uh, Tennessee police responded to a 30 traffic collision. Flights have been delayed in Memphis after freezing rain and sleet fell in Kentucky. the The governor declared a state of emergency to free up funding and help agencies coordinate as they responded to the reports of slick roads and downed power lines in southern indiana schools and government offices were closed so a lot of things resulting from this cold cold weather Uh, a lot of these areas don't normally get snowfall and when they see heavy amounts of snow which probably is coming over the next day next few days uh many states could get a foot or more so you definitely want people to be safe out here 
Uh, this is just one of those things with regards to the weather. Uh, we'll be back with more of Dami K in the morning after this. Radio on Fire is a listener-supported radio and podcast network streaming from our production facilities in Baltimore and Atlanta. We're able to broadcast programs like the Dami K Show because of our listeners and some amazing partners like D Lifestyle Secrets. Are you a baby boomer? Were you born between 1946 and 1964? Well, more than 71 million Americans are baby boomers. And as you're continuing to age, the goal is to experience as few aches and pains as possible while staying mobile. DLifestyleSecrets.com helps you do just that by providing a blueprint to reduce and or eliminate joint pain by teaching its members to communicate naturally with their bodies. DLifestyleSecrets.com gives baby boomers step-by-step videos, natural recipes, and most importantly, the motivation to re-energize themselves naturally. Visit DLifestyleSecrets.com to join this active community of baby boomers today. And I encourage you to shop with all the companies that support Radio on Fire. Before we get back to the show, have you ever had a Nutriburst liquid vitamin? This stuff tastes great, and they say it's great for you. Nutriburst liquid vitamin. Now, my girl Moochie told me about this, and me and Moochie go way back. She said, Diamond K, you have got to try this. So I asked Moochie, what's so special about Nutriburst liquid vitamin? What makes it so good? Then she gave me the rundown. Check this out. 72 minerals, 10 vitamins, 22 photonutrients, 19 amino acids, 13 whole vegetables, and 20 herbs. Get your Nutriburst liquid vitamin today at TotalLifeChanges.com slash MyMoochie. That's TotalLifeChanges.com slash MyMoochie. Tell them Radio on Fire sent you. Giving you more talk, more news, and more music. It's Radio on Fire. This pandemic has really sped up what was already happening. The world has become even more digital. Folks are on their computers, their tablets, their phones all the time. This is where people go to get their information. Here at Radio on Fire, our target listener is 23 to 54 years old. So business owners, I know times are hard, but I also know how important it is to get in front of your customers. Advertise your business, product, service, or event on Diamond K in the morning or any of the other Radio on Fire programs. We have an affordable package for you. Visit RadioOnFire.com slash advertise to get started. Again, RadioOnFire.com slash advertise. We'd love to connect with you. Welcome back to the show. Dom K in the morning. Follow us on all social media at Radio on Fire at the Diamond K Show. Much more to get into, so let's dive in. Tessica Brown, you know the you know the name. We've been hearing the name. Tessica. She underwent surgery. This is the Gorilla Glue Girl. Okay. Uh, says that she regrets posting the mishap. Uh, she should regret doing the mishap. She became a viral news story after uploading a TikTok video in which she she talked about putting this Gorilla Glue compound in her head. Obviously, she was unable to wash it out. Uh, People have been reaching out trying to assist her. But she says that she regrets uploading the video because of some of the negative energy and the hate that she got. Uh, On a recent interview with Entertainment Tonight, Brown said that her reasoning for uploading the video was to seek help, not to go viral or get attention. And that that might be true, because if she was trying to go viral, she probably would have had some music with that. Uh, I was never going to take this to social media, she said. The reason I took this to social media was because I didn't know what else to do. 
And I know somebody out there could have told me something I didn't think for one second when I got up the next morning it was going to be everywhere. But clearly, she doesn't do a lot of thinking because if she was a thinker, she wouldn't have put Gorilla Glue in her hair. The Griot.com reported that Brown uploaded a brief yet descriptive video explaining how when styling her hair, she noticed she was out of her typical finishing spray got to be glued free spray she noticed a bottle of spray gorilla glue in her house and decided to use that as a replacement that was not smart at all was not smart at all uh internet audience became invested seeing how she was going to remove this from her hair please do not look at her video do not look at what she went through and think that that's a good idea for you to do Uh, She took the advice of someone who suggested soaking her hair in coconut oil and tea tree oil, which she called an epic fail. Uh, She went to the hospital and she has used her TikTok and Instagram accounts uh, to chronicle her story. And I I mean, it's 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 really crazy, right? It's really crazy. So she's, she's finally now able to run her fingers through her scalp after undergoing a medical procedure she actually had to have surgery it's very important to read and and use your common sense Uh, a Beverly Hills based surgeon performed a $12,500 procedure which took 4 hours and he did this for free in a separate video clip he explained how he was going to remove the product from her hair said that he looked up the compound the main ingredient the main active ingredient in gorilla glue and figured out the science of how to break it down so he decided we're going to reinvent the wheel she better be lucky she better be lucky that uh this guy was out there and wanted to help her uh brown responded to the criticism that she was receiving as a result of this incident and denied uh, reports that she was pursuing legal action. Uh, Gorilla Glue representatives said that the company was pleased that the procedure was a success and uh, that she is doing well. I don't know how well she's doing uh, because if she does not see that the, the reason why this whole thing happened was because of her sad uh state of affairs to do this take a quick break come back with more of the show after this welcome back to the diamond k in the morning program on the all new radio on fire.com so day three of this trump trial we know what the outcome is going to be we know how this is going to go trump is not going to be convicted because the republicans in the senate don't have the courage or the guts to do it they don't have it democrats made their case they presented piles of new videos from last month's deadly capital attack. The invaders proudly declared that they were merely obeying, obeying the orders of the president because he was trying to fight to overturn the election results and Congress were certifying those results that day, his loss to now President Biden. Trump incited the invasion he helped plan the invasion he promoted the invasion for months but republicans in the senate are too scared of this base many of these people who don't actually vote but they're scared of this base so they're going to pretend that it didn't happen or worse These Republicans in the Senate are going to let this go unanswered. So who's to say that it's not going to happen again? Who's to say that? We don't know. 
We don't know. Trump could whip up a mob of followers for similar damage. He won't have the protection of the presidency, but it definitely could happen. Trump's defense is going to take the floor later on today, arguing that as terrible as the attack was, it was clearly not the president's doing. This just reminds me of what happened to his former lawyer. He does all this stuff for Trump and then he goes to jail. These people did all this stuff in the name of Donald Trump. Many of them will go to jail. Many of them won't. He doesn't give a damn about any of those people. The senators that are supporting him, he doesn't care about them either. He'll throw you under the bus in a minute. He threw Mike Pence under the bus. There is not a person living that was not more supportive of Donald Trump than Mike Pence. Maybe his former attorney, Michael Cohen, was more supportive. But Donald Trump has loyalty to no one. No one. Uh, But yet, Senate Republicans are going to stand by his side and um, get what they deserve, hopefully. The proceedings could finish with a vote this weekend by the senators who are sitting as impeachment jurors. The Democrats, with little hope of conviction by a two-thirds majority, what happened to just a regular majority? Why do they have to have these these uh, uh, convoluted rules? Oh, you need a, a full majority for this. You need a two-thirds majority for that. You need a one-fifth majority. I mean, it's, it's a bunch of foolishness. The most people should just win, right? Uh, but they always play these games. This is one of the things that really frustrates people about politics. This is the second impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. The charge is incitement of insurrection incitement of insurrection years later when people look back at this foolishness when they look back years from now it it is it is just truly truly strange times that we live in the democratic house members are acting as prosecutors and they have successfully drawn a direct line Today, Thursday, uh, from Trump's repeated comments condoning, even celebrating the violence, praising both sides. You remember 2017, that outbreak in Charlottesville and urging his rally crowd last month to go down to the Capitol and fight for his presidency. He said that he was going to join them. Remember that? He spread lies about election fraud and urged his supporters to stop the steal of his presidency it's amazing if Hillary Clinton had contested the results of the election Republicans would have lost their minds but they aid in a bed former President Trump in doing just that. Democrats are too nice. They don't call him out in his lies. They don't call him out for the lies. No. Uh, Mistaken in your claims. Unproven. Unsubstantiated. You know, he's a liar. He is a bald faced liar. Call him what he is. They always want to call terrorists what they are, right? He is a bald-faced liar with blood on his hands. At the White House, President Biden said that he believed some minds may be changed. Talking about Republicans, I don't think so. Maybe one. Senators, they saw a chilling security video earlier this week they saw more video yesterday I expect that Republicans defending the president are going to try to play uh, whataboutism they're going to probably show video 
of Black Lives Matter protests after the murder of George Floyd and other black Americans in this country at the hands of the police. They're going to show those videos and say that people that were speaking positively about protesters, they should have been charged with something. That's probably what they're going to do. President did this. What about that? That's what they're going to do. They're going to take a vote. They're not going to get the two thirds majority, and Trump is going to be acquitted. That's what I'm predicting. It's probably going to happen all this weekend. And that may be fine for now. But understand this Citizen Trump is going to have a few more things to deal with. Citizen Trump does not have the same crutches and the same ability to hide behind the office of the president. Citizen Trump has legal, real legal exposure. And I just don't know how long Citizen Trump is going to be able to run and hide. The first president to face an impeachment trial after leaving office. Trump is also the first president to be twice impeached. His lawyers say he cannot be convicted because he's already gone from the White House. Even though the Senate rejected that argument in Tuesday's vote to proceed with the trial. We're going to see. While six Republicans did join the Democrats to vote to proceed with the trial on Tuesday, the 56 to 44 vote was far from the two thirds threshold of 67 votes needed for conviction. So I think you all know where this is going. I think you all know. So, of course, Diamond K in the morning, I am here weekdays 8 a.m. with the top news stories of the day we're also here throughout the day with additional reports Uh, so much going on here at the all new radio on fire.com i am so glad that you're here to join us Uh, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk to rapper tamara bubble his new project out right now that you need to listen to but i Had a chance to catch up with the New York-based rapper for an exclusive interview on Diamond K in the morning. Hey, hey, I go by the name of Tamara Bubble, Bubble on Deck, originally from Brooklyn, New York, rapper, singer, songwriter, DIY, doing it. Right. Thank you for having me. Right, yes, you are, you are, and you have been... You've been in the in the game for a minute. Um, so you say that you are here by way of NY, yes, um, Brooklyn. How, what, like oh, Brooklyn to be to be clear, what uh, <laughs> your early your your early uh, stages in life as far as uh, coming up? What music were they playing in the house? Like, what did you grow up listening to? Um, so my background is gospel music. Um, my mother's a preacher, so I grew up definitely listening to gospel music. John P. Key, he's probably my favorite. But, um, let me see. Oh, God, I can't think of his name. There's one more, but that's like definitely where the start was. Um, but then outside of that, I want to say Michael Jackson probably influenced me the most creatively. Um, just because he could write a song about anything. Like, he could make a song about chicken and you'd be crying. Like, they'd be passing out. So it was just like, oh, something it's something about him and his delivery. So I've always been, like, super serious with the delivery. And then with rap, um, probably Biggie, Kim, Missy Elliott are the main or the biggest, like, influencers for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and those are some of the big ones. So when did you realize that you were able to really do music? Hmm, I never actually thought I would be doing music. I actually was um, like had started um, modeling and acting. Um, and then I was at a photo shoot and I met a producer there. He was like, yo, I heard you could sing. Let me hear something. So I sung a church song. He's like, you got pipes, but do you write? 
And I said, I do now. And I went home from that photo shoot and I wrote like 10 songs in two hours. Because the, the thing was that he was going to let me reference the vocals for Jasmine Sullivan. And so mm -hmm. I love her. So I, I, I wrote the stuff. But then when I wrote the lyrics, I felt like I wanted to deliver it. I, I wanted to perform it. So I started doing music from then on. And um, the thing, the thing I really, really enjoy about you, and uh, I've been aware of you for for quite some time, is just your your ability to make to to just jump into different genres, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and mm -hmm. see, some people, I, I don't know if you know, like like some people will make a song, mm -hmm. and then maybe they'll try to, maybe they're a hip hop artist. And then maybe they'll try to dive into R&B or maybe they'll try to dive into to reggae or dance. And it sounds like a rapper trying to do an R&B song or mm -hmm. a rapper trying to do a dance song. Mm -hmm. Whenever whenever you dive into another genre, you sound like the that authentic artist style that like Love each that. one that you jump into. So what and that's that's that is difficult to do. Mm. You know what I mean? How how is it that you're able to be so authentic within different music styles? I I really think it's all the influences I have. I think outside of like maybe country and like metal, I listen to a lot of different music. Um and I think I'm probably a combination okay. of all the music that I'm taking in. Um so what I'm putting out is probably like a mashup of all that stuff. And then for me too like with rap, I've always been like, yo, I could rap on any beat. I could sing on any beat. So I've always been willing to try. Whereas some people that are probably good at it probably haven't even explored it to see whether they can actually rock on it. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I um, uh, that's just something that really impresses me about you. Now, here's, here's the other thing, okay? What is your love life like? Because <laughs> when you when you hit those relationship topics, you get you super aggressive. Uh -huh. Like, where do you stand? Like, what 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 is your what is your love life like in real life? It's, it's private and I think that's good. Okay. Like, so is it good? Is it bad? It's either it's good. That much. It's either good or it's not happening. Like it, honestly, if I'm <laughs> in a relationship, I'm always evaluating. You like you on you on probation when you date me. So it's like you're three months in, am I wasting my time? Am I I'm always evaluating because I feel like you um a lot of people like get comfortable with a person the way they get comfortable with a job and they be stuck on the job for 10 years and they don't even really like that job so mm. i never wanted to be like that in life like that's crazy to me so it's like oh uh, no like you like i liked you at first but i'm not loving you now i'm not like weird like i'm not wanting to continue on with these days and adding up the time and be like oh i've been with him for five years because like if you stay too long with a person then you don't want to let go because you feel like oh i wasted all that time so I'm like, I'll skate quick. And then two, I don't look back. So like if this, if we end it, if either one of us end it, it's done. Like don't come back like, oh no, I thought about it and I'm sorry and let's try. No, I don't do none of that. It's like, you're dead to me. Like for real, for real. <laughs> so if it don't work that wow. first time, like if you, if you, if you thinking that we might have a chance, you should wait till you really ready to like make it work. Cause if you play with me, it's, it's over. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. But it's good though. I'm either happy or I'm looking forward to being happy with somebody better than you. So okay, okay. Uh, you you travel you travel a lot with your uh, when you're on your pre musical journey and you hit pre right pre COVID. Pre -COVID. You hit you hit other states. Have you have you met anybody that you may have idolized or grew up listening to, and, and you meet meet them in person and you were disappointed? Um, no, because I honestly, I try not to like idolize a person because then if they do something wild, then I don't want to feel crazy for like letting them influence me. You know what I mean? So it's, mm, for me, it's mm -hmm. just like, oh, I respect what you do. I really like your music, but I'm not going to be like, oh, and then see you do something wild. And then I look stupid out here for like supporting you all these years. <laughs> I got the tattoo on my arm <laughs> and now you're pedo. I can't do that. So it's like, I'm, I'm just not even going to like get like super crazy with it so uh, something that i like to ask people uh is about stage fright okay? okay is stage fright something that you've had to deal with at any point in time and how have you dealt with it um no so i've never been afraid to perform because for me it was like well, if i don't show these people i can sing or i can rap how they gonna know like they don't know the text for you they're gonna continue to sleep if you don't wake them up so it's, it's one of those mm -hmm. things of 
I need to perform to show you that I'm a performer. Like I need to rap so you know I rap rap. So it's it's those things. And then too, like I said, I started singing in church and I was um in a church. I've been in I've sung at churches that like has very small um crowd or or like, you know, followers or whatever and then bigger churches. So it didn't matter what size or if I was performing in front of one person, two people, 10 people, 10,000 people, I know for me, I need to give the same quality show that I give to one person to all 10,000 people. So I, I would just do what I need to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely feel you on that. And that's that's a, that's a great way to, uh, to you know, just to, to handle that. Uh, mm-hmm. What about writer's block? Do, do you get writer's block? Um, no, and I think it's because I let, I just like write down whatever comes to me. A lot of times songs just drop in my head and like I'll be either watching TV, walking down the street or driving or whatever. Excuse me, definitely if I'm like driving or taking a shower, the the songs, they just come, like the whole thing. Like, and so I get out the shower and I got, I got to go record now or I got the phone in the bathroom because I know I'm going to need to grab it and like start singing anything to remember. <laughs> the melody yeah, stuff yeah, is coming to yeah. my head, so yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I have writer's block, and then if I do, I would just like come back to it later, and something else will spark, and I'll remember, and then I go back and finish it. So I've never like had to stop, or like I couldn't think of something. Now, as far as writing, you're a writer. Um, how do you feel about rappers specifically that don't write? Um, I think it kind of takes away from the art form. Um, so if you're making money, I can't get mad at your hustle. But at the same time, I do like when it comes to singing, the reason why singers didn't have to write their songs were because um, the talent was in the vocal. We were talking about a, a couple of things, but I want to ask you a couple of rapid fire things. Cool. And um, uh, I'm just going to I'm going to throw some names out there and I just want you to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. When I when you hear this person's name, okay? Michelle Obama. Queen. Like I just think she's like the best. She's like the best auntie, the big auntie. <laughs> Donald Trump. Oh, trash. Yo, I put him as the cover of one of my songs. <laughs> and the song had nothing to do with him, but he was just like the poster boy for like trash. But that's just mm-hmm. how I feel. <laughs> Beyonce. Um, what's the word for her? She's legend. She's legendary. She's like so. She just live in legend. I'll say that. Yeah. Career. Cardi longevity. B. Cardi is box. Like Cardi make good music. Um, I feel like Cardi and Rihanna, even though they make completely different music, are on the same level of respect for me. Like they make hits. And that's actually what I want to make. I, I don't want somebody to listen to my music and be like, she's the best singer in the world. She's a, I'm the best rapper, but definitely sing. I want to be like, yo, these are hits and I can live to these hits. I'm a, I could sing to these hits, cry to these hits, break up with these hits, take a shower to this, like, just like live to the music. So I just always want to make great music. That's kind of my goal. So yeah. Okay. Three more names. Kanye West. Kanye is. I don't, I don't, I can't figure him out. I don't, I don't understand him. So that's just where I'm at. With him. <laughs> question, just, question mark. Question mark. What but... about, what about, what about Drake? Drake is calculated. Like everything he does to me is a strategy. Everybody he decides to collab with, everybody that he deals with, it's all for his benefit, so but he does it in a way to make you feel like he wants to see you win. Like it's very, smooth he's like playing them but helping him at the same time so that's, that's you are so is. right I, I like that one <laughs> he's Last the name. Of the ego yeah no you but you're right you're right but, yes. but at the same time he's helping himself yes. too definitely i got him <laughs> missy elliott she's queen like so i definitely would love to collaborate with her um i can see that honestly a lot of people tell me my music reminds them or reminds me, or you know what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah, she's she's cool. I love her. All right, so I want to talk about this project that you have out now. I may destroy you. I may destroy you. That is, <laughs> uh, uh, we were just talking. We were just talking here in the studio. That yeah, that's very aggressive. Like, it is. Where, where does this go? And uh, for people who can't see the cover, the cover is it looks like a 
a heart like a like a three dimensional heart with the arrow going through it. Yeah. And um, uh, it, it seems like the heart is is almost glass. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's breaking. It's fragile. What? You're fragile. <laughs> okay. What is the motivation behind this project? That actually uh, wasn't the original cover. The original cover was bullets. Like uh, okay. so target practice, target practice. Okay. Like the first date, like pop, 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 pop. Like so. You, <laughs> the uh, the reason why I changed it to the heart was because I was singing on it, and I felt like the if I if it was all rap album, I would have left the original cover. But I felt like it was a little bit more soft on some of the songs, so I wanted mm -hmm. the cover to kind of resemble like the mix of the rap and the R and B and the soul or whatever. Um, yeah, and. I May Destroy You is like, if I tell you how I really feel, I may destroy you. If I let you, like, if in, in a relationship, and not just me, just anybody, if you really say what you really feel, like so many people is in relationships and they have no clue what the person that they have promised the rest of their life to really feels about them. Or they have a clue and they just stuck anyway. So it's, it's just like, if I tell you how I really feel, I may destroy you. Yeah. Yeah. If I yeah, move what, how I really want to move, I may destroy you. Like, yeah. So, what causes us to get into that kind of rut? Like, how do we get locked into that kind of situation? Um, for some people, I think they're in bad relationships because they see other people in bad relationships, but they only see the good part of it, and they want that. And so, grass is green on the other side. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And then some people don't want to be alone, and like they'd rather be in a worse relationship together with somebody like miserable with someone than to have to admit that they're alone and like just because you're alone doesn't mean that you are oh i'm so depressed i'm gonna bite like most people are with somebody and like hating them it's scary so yeah 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 that is, that that is scary it is. um so the project how long did it take for you to uh record this project uh it didn't take long at all like i have so much music so a lot of the music that i make gets uh sync placement but i mm -hmm. just have so much material i'm always recording i'm always creating like right now i'm sitting on the next album but i can't put it out i just put out this one so i'm i like have like material like really really um stacked up but but as far as like piecemeal and the whole idea of it it took yeah. a couple months to put together. I was gonna put it out um, like late last year, but there was still like one more song that I needed to kind of glue everything together. Um, but yeah, it took a couple months to um, like just the layout, the, the which order, and all of that good stuff. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, this project, and a lot of people don't have the confidence to do this. No features. No. I so 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 bad boys. The chorus. Bad boys. Okay, the hook. Okay, the, the hook is uh, a vocal feature, but okay. this this is actually is the first feature I think ever that I've had on any of my released albums. Yeah, mo and most people don't have that level of confidence to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, some people's albums sound like compilations or soundtracks <laughs> with so many artists in there. Very so why? <laughs> yeah, very, you know, and, and you you know sometimes. Uh, they have it now that if you have too many features, then your your project can't be a solo project. It has to be like a, a various artist type of thing. But uh, that's just behind the scenes stuff. Why why is it? How is it that you have that confidence level to to say I don't need other artists on my project? Um, I think it was for me. I wanted to showcase the range of music that I make, and I felt like if I did a bunch of features, you wouldn't get a full understanding of what it is that I do and what it is that I can do on your project. So I was like, for my music, I needed to just be me, so you see what I can do, and then I can hop on your song and do whatever. Um, right. So yeah, that's that's why I did it that way. Yeah, no, that 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 is good, and so that is out there now. All streaming uh, services can people can uh, grab that up and uh, up. and listen to that. Definitely, definitely. Right. Um, another thing that you said, and and I I had it on my list to mention anyway, uh, is sync placement uh, mm -hmm. that is an important uh, an important part of your whole um business model mm -hmm. uh, can you explain to people that don't i know but people that don't know what that means yeah so uh synchronization is the idea of marrying music to media so whether it's a video game a tv show a commercial 
um, I don't know what else, a film, a movie. Um, it could be any of those, any type of media, a podcast, literally anything. And you put the music to it, then it's synchronized. The music, with yeah. The so yeah, yeah. About your business, see, um, and that that is important. Uh, so of course we're in in a pandemic. How has this? Uh, how has the pandemic affected your, or has it affected your musical output? Um, just your your general mood and everything. Um, general mood is is. I've been fortunate. Like my media family, we all been good. As far as like my business, it's been doing better. Like it's been going up. So I can't even say like, oh, you know, everything that's going on now. I'm empathetic to other people because some people's really out here struggling during COVID. But like with the syncs and with the music in general, everything's kind of been going well for me. And so I just been cranking out more music. Um, the one thing that has changed, like the recording, I used to do everything in studio, um, but I would travel a lot, so I'd be in a bunch of different studios in different cities. But now I'm recording at home, but still the crank is real, still doing it, like getting the stuff out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Definitely. Um, I know this is this is always something that artists struggle with answering. Uh, because it's almost like picking your children. Do you have a favorite project? Do you have a favorite project? I'm not even going to say favorite song. I'm going to say a favorite mm. project. And I, and I know that may be hard. <sighs> yeah, that may be hard, but I I need to. I like to be decisive, so I just have to pick one. And I would say favorite project is the favorite rapper is a girl too. Okay. Um, so you released that last year. Yes, I released that last year, and almost all of the songs have had sync placements. Like, it's done the best commercially. I mean, it's still to be, stay tuned, whatever, whatever, because I just dropped I May Destroy You, but we'll see. <laughs> um, right. But that one, I definitely um, feel like it was the biggest improvement from So Your Favorite Rapper is a Girl. I felt like I improved even more in terms of. I don't know. I just got better beats and stuff. Like producers are like really sending me their stash and not they they throwaways. <laughs> like send me the good stuff. Don't send me that trash. So they start sending me their stash stash and then yeah, I start lighting them beats up. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and so um, that's interesting because a lot of times uh, people's uh, a sequel is is usually not as hard as that first one you mm -hmm. know what i mean mm -hmm. but um so that that is is interesting that that you like that one better and, and i guess you just um uh so uh, as far as that series is there going to be a part three to that series definitely that's the next one coming um okay it's almost done it's not done but it's almost but I'm always recording, so sometimes a new song will come in, I'll be like, nah, I'm putting that one on it. And so I get to, you know, pick and choose and maestro how the, the, the structure of it and the layout and all that. But um, mm -hmm. uh, definitely, like, over halfway done with that one. But there will be a three, and I think there's going to be a four. I rap a lot. And I like putting out music. And <laughs> <laughs> so are you I'm like a rapper, so I got to keep going. Oh. Are you are you rapping on your phone? Are rapping from your phone, or are you going from the? Do you have it already memorized? Are you have it on a sheet of paper? Like how are you? How are you uh, looking at the lyrics? Um, I usually write them down first, um, and then as like I'm pen, recording, pen the paper. Yeah, well, no finger to phone, <laughs> clack clack clack. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. But uh, or I'm recording, you know, like the voice memo. Sometimes I'll do that. Mm, like sometimes I'll record good. like the, the flow. A lot of times I just record the flow. How I want to switch up the flow, and then I fill it in with the lyrics. So, um, but usually I write them and then work it out to the beat. So I have been in the game for a long time since the the mid '90s, and and when I talk to mm -hmm. artists that are from that time who like kind of got started at that time uh, not all mm -hmm. but many of them feel like the music game is not what it used to be they're kind of down on it uh with the digital the, you know the digital thing then when i talk to artists from the early 2000s or or the late 2000s they have a different more of a different outlook mm -hmm. you're somebody like you understand this digital landscape and and you have that mm -hmm. down pat Artists from the 90s were trying to get signed to a record label. Uh, a lot of the artists that I see now, not so much. 
Where do you right. sit? Are you trying to get signed to a label, uh, or is it you want to continue to do your your independent thing? What's the goal? Yeah, so I never in my life wanted to be signed to labels. You know why? Because I would always hear like you hear your favorite artist like shelved and like, oh, I want to put out this project, but the label like ill. Like, how you gonna have yeah. all this talent and <laughs> and can't even release your gift? Yeah. Crazy. You're not holding yeah. back. You're not holding back what I'm trying to put out for me. Creative control has always been number one. And then I do a bunch of different genres and labels wanna like put you in a box. Like for me, I always felt like even with Chris Brown, like rapper and singer, but like, like they made him be so R and B that when he tried to do the rap stuff too, it was like, Okay, yeah, I like this song, but they won't really let him be a rapper. But if, imagine if they had let him go wild at the beginning when he was 16. But anyway, he's still dope. But I'm just saying, I don't like the the like the the R&B. Like they have they have to do it. So their business, right? They got to market you to a certain demographic of people. I get it. So they got to pick R&B or they got to pick rap or they got to pick pop or they got to pick EDM, um, so that they can know where they're putting their money. But I my strategy right. is completely different. Like I've studied um Nipsey. Um, Russ, especially, I study like mm-hmm. every independently. Definitely. I'm, um, chant, like all of that. Um, tech nine, Definitely. like just studying their business side of it. Cause I was like, mm-hmm. I don't have no female artist that's like they so. That's like, I gotta be that. And that's how I found Sync because I knew with the placement, I would be able to fund myself like a label and like come up with the six figures or whatever you need to release a project like correctly. Like, I needed the money to do that and pay well so I could right. be able to do that and put it into the music and continue releasing more. So that's been the strategy. And then it's like, I know that this production company, they got w- way bigger pockets than I do. Like if they put my song in a commercial, that's the single because they've been to put that song across the United States for me on TV. And they're like, yeah. the whole commercial is about the song pretty much. That's what you're going to yeah. be hearing. If they- so I was releasing music. So then I would start to release the song as I got the placement and work the record while they work in the record. So now they my machine. And then, you know, it kept going on like that. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that I, th- I think that that is really great. And it, it's it's that you understand that this is this is a marketing. And the other thing that's, yeah. that, that really puts you in a good position is that you jump to so many different genres. So there's, you know, some mm-hmm. people that just do, you know, street music or, or, or something for the for the hood. They're not going to have those mm-hmm. opportunities that you have because you jump multiple genres and commercials and different things. Uh, I don't think that I heard any profanity on um, on this project. Uh, and, and that's another thing Church girl. Church girl. that works into <laughs> your advantage. You don't have to go back and record a clean version because it's already clean. True, and, true. Uh, what? Yeah, is it, was that stuff that you did intentionally? Uh, yeah, that's true. I'm good. No, you said yeah, no. I, I think that I think that that is great. So as far as visuals, do we have some some visuals coming up? Um, so I have I haven't shot visuals during COVID, and I need to figure that out because um my video guy shout out to oh, Foregrounds Media. I want to make sure I say his IG name correctly. Like I, he's in Atlanta, so I would always like shoot the videos while I was in Atlanta so I haven't been to Atlanta I don't think since COVID hit so I gotta figure it mm-hmm. out um I definitely want to um shoot some videos so I'm probably going to do a bunch of them at once but I gotta just you know figure it all out and uh, make some time and get my mask and all that stuff ready and <laughs> go right, make it happen right. yeah. <laughs> definitely uh definitely definitely uh again the project is called I May Destroy You yes. it is available everywhere yes. how can uh people stay in touch with you and follow your whole movement um, I'm everywhere at Tamara Bubble T A M A R A B U B B L E. Also, my official webby has like the whole catalog on there, so you can stream everything TamaraBubble.com. Definitely hit me up on there. Wonderful, wonderful. I really appreciate you uh, taking some time to chop it up with me. Thank you for having uh, me. I love the project, yes. and um, I'm Thank definitely you. going to be uh, promoting it and, uh, and and all of that. So uh, definitely, thank, thank, you, thank you so thank much. You. Stop it out with me and uh, don't be a stranger, okay? Wait, wait, wait. I'm uh, trying to destroy nobody this week. <laughs> right, please, please don't. <laughs> Double. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you. All right, bye. All right, see ya. All right, so uh, that was a lot of fun. And um, 
as I said, her music available now. I, I really like that she has a uh, great head on her shoulder. She has her business mind in order and all that. And that's look, I, that is rare to see. Some artists, for the most part, just want to sign with somebody and and have them do the work. But she understands that you got to put in that work, and uh, and she's putting in the work. So definitely salute to her. Project is out right now. Um, Right now, my favorite song is Bad Boys. But that could change. That could change. You never know. So I definitely encourage you to check that out. Your man Diamond K. 